Hello and welcome to yet another Lord's Law panel discussion where today we're discussing the final of the 60th anniversary specials, the David Tennant return specials, whatever you want to call them, um, which is the episode The Giggle. And I have here today, Kian. Black History. And Zach. We didn't get any of that. It was just like muffles. Okay, I was doing a Black Guardian voice. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I prefer it that way. Just like say what you would have been doing an impression of, and just save us having to listen to it. It's great. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So the giggle. Um, I think this is one of those episodes where it's kind of best to go through it in phases of the episode because this is another one of those mm-hmm. stories which um. Well, a lot happens in it, and I think kind of doing it in the traditional panel discussion format of talking about Doctor, Companions, plot, not going to work. So why don't we start kind of discussing how it began with um, going um, Unit HQ, all of the things um, that went on there. Uh, what, what do we think, first of all, the return of like um, Unit, Kate Stewart, and also Mel? Uh, do you want to start, Kian? I mean... It was interesting seeing how units are going to evolve under Russell. Like, I think they even remarked on it in the episode. You've gone from completely secret to, hey, we're open in public. We've got an Avengers Tower. Knowledge. Yeah, we've got a big tower. We're using the Disney money. That's what we're doing. We even have their um, own Jarvis. Kate Shua actually had, like, a personality, but that was Did she? kind of... I, I mean, there was, like, a scene where she took off the thing. That gave her more of a personality than she ever had. She's so still she very lacking. Out. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you on that. She very, she, she was mostly her... the same as she had been beforehand, though. The same stoic lady she's always been. Yeah, they just gave her a little bit when they let the anger loose, even if it wasn't intentionally what she wanted to say. And um, Mel really, Mel really was just t posing for a lot of the episode. I felt. <laughs> yeah, Mel did a great job yeah, they of never... being there. Um and being around and being oh, yeah. allegedly a person. Uh, I mean, yeah. she had about as much character as she had during the classic series, but I assume she's going to be... Minus the more, screaming. Yeah, I assume she's going to be more important next season and in the Probably. inevitable unit spin-off we're getting. Yeah, I have to say, well, I am a little disappointed with unit in this episode because i thought right we've kind of got this unit who've been a bit characterless for years Moffat didn't do very well with them chibnall did even worse and um thought well you know <coughs> oh, sorry it's, russell t russell t davis is a case why things... yeah russell t. davis is the man for characterization usually like even if you don't like some of his characters and the way they're done he can do characters but i don't know he didn't really liven up kate stewart he didn't do anything with Mel. I mean, it felt entirely pointless, her return. And I didn't really feel that... Um, oh, what's Ruth Madley's character's name again? Oh, I Shirley. Like Shirley. Yeah, I Shirley. Like Shirley. Did, I like Shirley. But she didn't really go anywhere further than what than the kind of very limited she, she characterization we got in the Star Beast. Like I understand what they were trying to do with... I understand what Russell was trying to do with her, like he said, the commentary. He, was, he wanted her to be more antagonistic idea between the before the doctor someone that doesn't really like the doctor that much but it never that never really came across to be honest did it i mean, i didn't even like i haven't watched the after commentary things um but i had no idea that's what he was going for he, I, I genuinely i did not get that like from the script to the, do- foil to the doctor saying i don't need to we can do this ourselves that's the family that was the idea of her but that never really came across yeah that's pretty poor for me if that's his intention, he should fail to convey that completely, I would say. Well, I still think she's even better than Osgood. That, that's what I'm saying. Low bar. Yeah but, yeah, but Osgood is just what Stephen Moffat thinks women Doctor Who fans are. Mm. <laughs> well, you know she would have been off stage trying to steal David Tennant's suit. Although, um, out of the unit stuff, the one bit I did like was um a lot of the stuff in in terms of like the um anger that people were feeling and everybody thinking they're right and then like the the kind of effect that has on people. I thought it was both kind of funny and, you know, while it was very on the nose social commentary, 
you don't i mean things are so beyond parody at this point on the nose is kind of like on the button <laughs> and, it, and like seeing kate stewart it's like tearing so like funny. shirley going like i've seen you walk it was actually quite funny kate stewart became a I daily thought it was mail so funny that they, i thought it, i thought it was so funny that they got um trinity wells that American newscast from the first Russell era and turned her into Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, For some exactly. reason, I found that so Bloody funny. woke BBC turning Alex Jones into a woman of colour. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of society. Although that's one funny now, thing I Trinity found is that is the Star Beast and the Giggle are the first two Doctor Who episodes in absolutely ages that I've actually found to be funny. And while Boo Yonder, the funny bit of it, I absolutely hated, despite that being by far the best of the three episodes. Just something funny I noticed. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're so, the one of Japanese. Oh, yeah. I mean, just the, 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 re- the other two episodes aren't even close. So, yep. Um, so that, the, after they kind of, you know, go to Unit HQ and not don't really do a whole lot, I don't really see how it advances the plot going there. It's it, it seems it's more there just as a backdrop it's, rather than actually adding anything yeah, to the plot. It's, it's, it's as, the reason to step really, up sort of conflict. There, they're really just there to sort of set up the inevitable Disney Plus spin-off with um, with that eight with that alien Jarvis thing as their Smith <laughs> or whatever. Oh, I just like how there was an, a robot there, an alien robot with no in- explanation. It's just like, yeah, he's there. Or they're there. That was quite whatever. funny. That was pretty funny. It's like, oh yeah, he's here. Hello. Let's see him do things. That was that was quite that was quite fun. Yeah, yeah. No, but I didn't get I didn't get that robot at all. Like you just kept on coming on screen. I was like, "What? What? What is this robot? Why is it here?" They never seem to explain it. Uh, it's very much Russell going. I will explain everything in great detail later. You mm. did in the commentary again. You just apparently, uh, apparently the idea was they just found him in a crash, and there'll be more of him in the new. Series. Oh my god! Oh, god. He's, he's becoming J and T. He no, he's becoming J and T. What's happening to the man? It's silly. It's just that he he has to he explains important plot information outside the episode rather than in the episode. Yeah. I hope this doesn't become a recurring theme because that's really not on for TV show. I, there was someone who like, did a tweet the like other day talking about like how no you, you can't justify um, things in the plot um, like outside of the the episode. The episode should speak for itself and mm-hmm. asking people to do anything else is like basically make, saying you've got to do homework to watch this TV show. It's like how he explained that this is the permanent Davros from here on in even though there's nothing in the actual in that thing that proved that. Yeah, it's yeah, just I, I just odd. I still think they're retiring Davros. Full stop. I I just think that's an easier explanation. We just won't see him again. Yeah, Russell T. Davis has been running his mouth and saying very silly the things in these like post episode commentaries, and I don't know. It's getting me a lot more worried about what this year is going to turn out like. Because as good as Wild Blue Yonder is, and we'll get into it later. I don't know what the hell he was thinking with part of this episode. But before we get too mired in negativity, why don't we move on to the, I think, the bit of the episode that most people agree pretty darn good. When the Doctor and Donna basically go to the bit they probably should have just started at rather than arsing around in Unit HQ for no discernible reason and enter the Toy Maker's Toy Shop. What do we think of that scene? Do you want to start, Zach? Oh, fun. So fun. Very concise. I like it. Kian? <laughs> Oh, can I just say how much I love the idea of the toy maker implanting himself into the first TV broadcast? Like, that was a good idea, and I wanted more of that, but it was just set dressing, which annoyed me. Well, that's the right. kind of that, well, that's the problem with this episode, really. Is this part in the toy shop is excellent? Like, there's loads of great set pieces. There's loads of great moments. Sure, some of it gets oh, it on the creative side, but it's great. But the, the problem is, this is just creepy. yeah, this was just set it's dressing just for later. Like this, seeing how freaky the original puppet was from that TV broadcast and making it a, and making it a Doctor Who monster. That is brilliant. Yeah, that that could have been an episode in itself. Apparently, the first draft of that was apparently that dummy was a rip before they decided it would be the toy maker. That dummy was just going to be the monster. Yeah, no, um, it it definitely was quite a cool scene. I mean, you're right; the dummies were quite creepy. Even though the kind of hokey German accent got a bit annoying, I did quite like the bit where he was trying to like um, traumatize the doctor by talking about what happened to his companions, as well as like scared Donna. Um, I find it very funny how he didn't mention the Chibnall companions. Oh, 
Yeah, because nothing bad boring. happened to them. No. Like, like the worst thing you could have done is, and then there was Dan, whose house was shrunk by a dog man. <laughs> but at least he, but he had soup. Well, that's all right then. Oh, well, there's somebody like better. Well, that's all right then as well. You can just pull from like the expanded universe. Uh, there's a million tweets on Twitter then... already doing that exact thing. And then, and then Rory Williams died again. And again, and again, <laughs> and again. Because, and again. Well, that's all right then. <laughs> but yeah, I, that would I don't, be funny I, if he just had a whole bunch of terrible puppets and just kept killing them. Although it yeah. was a, it was a great reminder of how little consequences there were for death in the Muffat era. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like um, your companions died brutally. Yes, but then they lived a million years. Uh, <laughs> You know, Funhouse Flux as a puppet show was more impactful than whatever the hell that was in the actual Flux series. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was better handled than last episode. Even so, it was still fun. It was somehow a puppet show was better than that crappy because, CGI. Because we're actually like seeing more consequences from it, and unfortunately, that might well, fortunately or unfortunately, that might be the last time we ever see consequences from it. Yeah, actually, so that's kind of something to talk about. Mm -hmm. So. Based on the end of this episode, I wonder if, like, the Flux hasn't actually been brought back to actually do anything with it. Because there was nothing done with it in the original series. I mean, it by the fact that they just like abandoned it straight away afterwards. Really and it was basically just like, Russell was like, well, shit, I need another trauma because I love torturing my doctors. Um, and let's just use this as, like, the new time war for a bit. Until then, he can just go and retire and have his happy fun time where he forgets his well, trauma. Like, <laughs> like, 14 has gone to therapy, apparently. Like, I, I'm not even going to explain that later. I've, I've seen a headcanon that I'll try and explain. But um, I, I have thoughts on that, but we'll get to it. Yeah, well, it's I, just, I, I get what he's done. He's basically like, this last... Since I've left, it's got very messy with, like canon and what should be affecting the doctor i'm just gonna move them on and have a fresh start yeah but, but the thing is what he could have just done time. that though i'm gonna go back to the positive of the sequence though i thought all the puppet effects were brilliant and russell actually did they actually did get like proper puppeteers and proper big name big puppeteers in the industry and it re and it really does show well, they kind of and go even, back what... even on the weird cgi bits with the with the date with the i thought i was clever 14 puppet which was which was quite creepy. Just all no, of that, that was kind of nightmare was... fuel. To go back yeah. what Kian was saying quickly in terms of the flux, um, I think yeah, I think that might actually be it in terms of what they do with it. It was just kind of brought back as like this temporary trauma and reason to retire the doctor. And now we're just not gonna get any of it anymore. And like I don't understand why they did if they wanted to, as Kian was saying, just distance the show from all the law baggage just move on well, that because be... that's what russell t davis himself did originally so he knows it can be done like yeah. nobody was really waiting on tent the hooks for um I... the resolution of anything from the chibnall era barely anybody was watching and yeah most people just wanted to move on mm -hmm. at that point so he's brought back the flux to not do anything with it other than just make it a stand-in trauma as a reason to retire and the tenth for doctor reason. for like the sake of moving that, the show well. on but why didn't he just move the show on? I don't see why he couldn't. I just, get, I I don't get know. It's easier. I made, I made the two thousand and five comparison. Yeah, I made the two thousand and five comparison for a reason. But I guess it's much easier to just ignore stuff from sixteen years ago than from two years ago. Is kind of his like dilemma there. Well, you can say that, but like nobody was watching the Chibnall era by the end. Like it had incredibly low ratings that it completely fell out of the public consciousness and. A good majority of the fans were more than ready to move on. Like, even people who were, were, didn't dislike the chimney were just like, you know, yeah, okay, I'm ready for something new. They've done this before. Like, the fans have done it before where they've just kind of, like, moved on to a new era when things have got a bit stale and not really worried about things that happened last year. Like, nobody was... Like, very few people were complaining with most of the, like, kind of Muffat stuff that wasn't brought up again, with the exception of, like, um, the Master well, Missy <laughs> stuff. That was really the only thing I well, think people well, kicked up the fuss yeah. about. But, like... I just, I don't see why there was any necessity to do that. I don't think anybody, Honestly, even like the like... biggest Chibnall fans, were expecting the flux to be addressed. Like, I think people would have been more than happy for the show just to move on to something completely different. And we wouldn't have needed to do, like, 
this whole dance around at the end of the episode does, which I suppose we should probably get onto that now, as we've already started talking about this whole yes, like yes, 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 weird, yes. L- like ludicrous Ugh. law dump for the I sake of it. moving on. I but hate it. What was the point? You could have just moved on. You did. Right. I, don't know, I, I don't know what it is because Russell T Davies really seems to think that David Tennant's Doctor is the most important Doctor there is. And, and on that note as well, I mean, I said I said this when the leak was coming out about it. But for fuck's sake, does he not realize what ammunition he's provided to people? He could, he's basically provided a free pass yeah. to say David Tennant's the real Doctor and Shooty Gatwa is this fake clone. Do you not? Does he not realize what he's done? Yeah, well, I I don't know if I agree with that, Zach, because like we shouldn't be writing yeah. things on the basis yeah. of how racists will, in a bad See, faith way, I know, misinterpret I know, but it's still a what they're saying. So it, it, it doesn't that doesn't matter. Like, yeah, regardless of that, it's still a very silly idea. Racists will find a way to complain yeah, about it, full, no matter what. So we just need to ignore that. Fourteen gets to have therapy. We get to move on from New Who's baggage. But it, but it, but even so, it's it, that whole thing is rendered completely mute because then what at the dinner scene, they just they already established he's already gone off on adventures with Rose and Mel. So that's kind of mute. He's just basically left a gap, and so Big Finish or Disney or whatever can just do a whole spin off Fourteenth Doctor series or whatever. I mean, and I hate. It. I have a feeling we are are going to get like like. An odd fourteenth Doctor movie stuff. I think that so seems too. like a very Disney yeah. thing to do. Keep David Tennant around before for the sake Just... of for the sake of ratings boost. Hey, look, look here's something you will remember. Yeah, there you go. it's it's just I like this whole before. bioregeneration thing because. I'm guessing the justifying motive was, as we've been saying, leave the baggage of all of the law behind to move on. But as I said, I already don't think it was necessary. But it's just the fact that you've added so many levels and layers of new confusion, which is going to be so off-putting to kind of new people coming in the show. The fans don't really get it. Even then, um, even and it's just like, so basically, anyway. is it, yeah, but, but it's in an unenviable situation because now either we've got to explore by regeneration and that's a whole other new law thing we've got to wade into or it just skips over it and it just becomes even more mystifying. And on that note, on, the, on exploring that, um, more and Russell saying shit that's not actually in the episode. Apparently, all the Doctors by regenerated. So somewhere each... Yeah. Uh, e- has somewhat survived, and as some as it's, a version of it's John very Lester, much he's not having their own adventures, and that was his way of justifying season six B as well. That's Apparently, the second, the second Doctor in that is a uh, by regenerated second. Oh, season six B, even as I like the big finish audios, like that doesn't need to exist. You know, it just, it almost comes across like bad fan fiction, to be honest, this whole bi-regeneration thing. This sounds like the kind of rubbish that somebody would, like, post on, like, Tumblr back in 2012. It's like, oh, here's a great idea of how we could have all the old Doctors back, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just like, it just feels so unnecessary. Oh, and ate up it such a massive amount. Of, like, it ate up I'm such a massive amount, such a big episode. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, look, I'm sure the... I'm sure the book waves are going to correct me on this in the comments or on twitter later but um i'm pretty sure there is a book that does that exact same idea where the doctors in multi-doctor stories are actually doctors from universes where they didn't regenerate in that incarnation or something stupid like that the only, the only thing i know the only thing, the thing i know close to that is death comes to time but i there's probably more yeah it's just the same old problem of the show being too much about the show, the show being too obsessed with itself and feeling the need to explain or introduce all sorts of weird new lore in order to, like, kind of, um, you know, give, like, a happy ending to overinflate the importance of one segment of the character's life or, like, to be obsessed with its own history. Like, so much of it, of this episode also had like just random name drops and like references and things like that. And it felt very un Russell T. Davis. Russell oh. T. Davis very cleverly tended to avoid that kind of thing in his first era. And in this era, it really felt like a, oh. a big step backwards for him as right even than how he was originally. It's, uh, I'm just, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> oh, the Mavic Gen one got me. 
because it's like I mean, it's like five, you want to avoid you want to like style. show like the toy maker the toy maker is like bad because he was a racist caricature or something and then you're like hey let me name drop one of classic who's yellow face villains and then earlier we have them say the word celestial which i know i know i know it, it just means, means the stars, stars in that but context. considering that discourse you didn't need to but well, you didn't need to open that discourse, and Russell even opened that up again by talking about the origins of the, the racist origins of celestials behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, but it's just... I really didn't like about that. I know we're not talking about the. I know we're not talking about the episode when we mentioned this, but the one thing I really didn't like about that is like I don't like the celestial toy maker the episode, but like you don't need to accuse Michael Goff of putting on an accent. He didn't. He didn't put on an accent. He wasn't. He was... He was using his normal voice. It was it was a, a general RP accent. Yeah, like listen to other things mm -hmm. Michael Goff's been in. That's just how he acts. Like honest, like this is what I was talking about earlier in terms of Russell's Watch the Batman his mouth. movies from Tim Burton. Like, just Alfred, why? Even, even why do you feel the need to do like say all of these ridiculous things? Like, what does he think he's trying to prove? Like, people already know he's a progressive guy. Why is he feeling the need to just go ludicrously over the top? And like you know, this, this um, shit much, on long dead much, actors who didn't do he didn't like, do anything it wrong. Like really, it almost feels like he just he think I think it's gone to his head a bit. Like because he was the showrunner that people met, look back fondly that that most adult that most young adults now look at him as one of their childhoods. He thinks he can do anything without consequence. He thinks he can do anything and fans will eat it up. Or fans have I, to I don't know. I don't think that's the case. I actually I think it. A lot of this comes from more of a place of insecurity because it seems almost as if he's trying mm. so hard to go out of his way to try and prove his progressive credentials in a way that he just doesn't have to. Like, like and not, nobody should have stuff. to, but especially him. And I, 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 like, maybe it is all sincere and I'm just misreading it, but some of it just comes across like he's trying so hard to, like, be this ideal bastion of modern progressivism but because obviously he's from a bit of a different generation from those kind of people he's not quite sure how and it does feel as if yeah he doesn't he's just making just really. such weird missteps that aren't really yeah, doing anything other than just pissing people off for no reason like 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 going back to power of the doctor as well when 13 regenerates the clothes regenerate the justification being we can't put we can't put a man in women's clothing, even though it's just a t-shirt, a coat, and whatever. But then, what does he do? Has Shooty Gatwar in his pants for it, lot of it. And jumping a bit ahead, those blue trousers from his leather coat outfit, they're 13's trousers. So by his own logic, Shooty Gatwar's in, in drag. Yeah, it's just like... It's just... <sighs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Th this is... This episode... It, the thing is, I know I've been really negative for the vast majority of this, but actually about half the episode I did enjoy. But it's just some of the yeah. things in here are such bad warning signs for what's to come with RTD. Because, like, last I, episode I was I'm waxing really lyrical hope. about, like, these are all the positive signs about the kind of Doctor Who might have in the future. This has been the opposite. This is, like, a lot of my worst fears and things I didn't even realise I had to fear kind of coming true about RTD. This really felt... Like it, it failed in a way that a lot of his other finales did, where it just kind of was trying to tell a good story, but just got so derailed by being obsessed with itself, the lore of the show, and like making the current, like the characters one super special. Himself. Yeah, one upping himself too much. It felt like it had a lot of those issues and more. Um, like ones that the original RCD era didn't have, such as being obsessed with lore and like um, making too many references. And it's just. I'm really, I am very concerned as to what the future of RTD's Doctor Who is going to hold if this is the kind of thing that we're going to get. We, I'm, I can exactly I'm still on playing on Spice on your still Spice on your for a little bit of hope. Like, if this had just been a, a mediocre Toy Maker episode with bits I liked, bits I didn't like, and that whole bio regeneration, like, well, that whole end bit of the episode hadn't happened, I probably would have been relatively hopeful for what was coming up in the RTD era, because that's how I felt, because the Star Beast, mediocre, but, you know, kind of had to be a, just be a quick reintroduction to the show for all the people who tuned out. Wild Beyond, a brilliant, one of the best episodes in years, shows what it can do, 
ends with a mediocre kind of story, you know, just, I mean, not every episode could be Wild Blue Yonder, and they'll be like, right, this this looks like it's going in the right direction, whereas I, this seems like a veering in the wrong direction, but I, I, I have no, I, I, I mean, I suppose we'll have to see where it goes from here, but I am certainly a, a lot more sceptical than I was. And I'm just clinging on to the saying- hope that that law dump was to get rid of future law dumps. You know, he has to use I the law dump to destroy the law dumps. I mean, he if, is inevitable. And, uh, the, that's positive anyway, that's the case, was, but even, even so, I don't think it was necessary. Anyway, Zach, sorry, you've been dying to talk forever. Go on. Yeah. Okay, I can... Because I'm I'm with I'm with you for pretty much all of it, and I can tell you the exact moment the episode fell apart for me, and it was something I'm surprised we not talked about yet. The bloody spice on your life dance, spice up your life dance sequence. Yeah, that was a bit rubbish. Pain, your fucking pain. But, the, but even then, com, com, relative, relatively compared to what we what happened, what we've already discussed with the bio generation stuff, that's that's annoying. But I can get I can live with that. But, that's the Russell You're T. Right, Davis camp you unfortunately have to take with him. <laughs> up, until the, up until the bi regeneration thing, I was really enjoying the episode. I thought it was I thought it was I was having a lot of fun with it. But then all that happened and it's just yeah. they just wanted to cram everything in. I was it just everything fell apart at that moment. And even and I and and shoot and I'm sure Shooty is great casting for the doctor, and I know He's probably going to have some really good performances in the future, but as a first impression, I think it just didn't really hit with me, to be honest. And I'm really sad to say that. I have to agree with you there. I like. I mean, I feel that's one big mistake of this episode, where basically his introductory episode isn't even an introductory episode; it's like an introductory third of an episode, and he was sidelined for most of it, sidelined for a law dump. And what little we oh, saw of him, I have to say, story. didn't feel very yeah. doctory to me initially so far. Know, the little bits of it's a guy running around through, with the little, little bits that were coming through, I did kind of like the vibes and I just did kind of like certain things. And it's like, I'm hoping we do just get a doctor that is just, hey, I'm just going to travel around the universe and have fun, like you know, move away from New Who's whole obsession with, I must fix every single problem. That's yeah. the one silver line I can have for this 14th stop settling down. I hope, I hope 15 will just go back to being the fun adventure, the fun enigmatic adventure. I hope we actually okay. get, like, travel around time and space. <laughs> I agree. Uh, it's Russell T. Agree. Davis. We're getting at least four. We're getting at least four episodes set on Earth. Uh... I mean, we already know that. We already know that units coming, and they're already going to expand on that alien. I mean, um, alien garbage. It, just to kind of go back to the comments on Shitty for a second, it is kind of insane that it's taken us this long to talk about. Them. And to be honest, until you brought it up, Zach, I'd almost completely forgotten he'd been in this episode. That's how sidelined and really just uneventful just, the regeneration felt like for, in terms really of him being of, the new doctor i just feel really sad that i don't have much to say about him because when he was passed i was really happy because i i've seen him in sex education i know he's a verse i know he is a versatile actor and i was looking forward to this but the fact that he felt like a side character in david tennant's story and the fact that he that yeah. maybe he existed to tell david tennant to go sit down and be, and and have a, and have a holiday that's it just doesn't feel it just feels just doesn't hit with me at all because at yeah. least with the other regeneration the, the old doctor was gone the old doctor was gone they, we've moved we've moved on now it's time for the new and i don't have that feeling this time and one thing we haven't even mentioned is the fact that by regeneration now basically is the final nail in the coffin for all stakes in doctor whoever because, like, the one yeah. stake in Doctor Who, the one thing that we always know is that we have to worry for the Doctor once it starts getting at the free season mark, because once that happens, they're mm-hmm. probably going to die, and then they don't come back, or if they do come back, it's only very briefly. Exactly. It's like, you the, the lose that character. The there is now no stakes whatsoever, it's... because they've just, they've all got, like, a second version of themselves who gets to go eat tea and crumpets and have occasional trips to the moon. Right. Just really, yeah. So I'm yeah. and that's apparent, and that's apparently why Patrick Falcon's 
in the two doctors, according to Russell. We don't need it any more of that. didn't need explaining. Yeah, we well, Doctor Who, stop trying to explain oh. everything in its history and just tell a story. That's why Well Beyond it was so good. It didn't try to explain anything in Doctor Who's history. It, didn't, it wasn't interested in lore. It wasn't like trying to, you know, make everything about, you know, no. the show. It was just a good mm -hmm. story, well told. Yes, it did include some, like, stuff from other episodes, but effectively as a part of the characterization, which is how it should be. And it was great. Why can't that be the model for Doctor Who? Because this, this episode is very much what I really do not want Do Doctor Who to be. This is what it's kind of been for a long time, and this is, I was really hoping that Russell T. Davis wouldn't take it to this point, but... Because when the, down, when the lead yeah, again, was, the analysis came out, I was I was horrified. I was really horrified. There were people around me trying to reassure, saying, "Ah, it might not be. It, it, this sounds ridiculous. It won't happen. It won't happen." And what do you know? Everything, everything yeah. was one hundred percent true. Because because literally, when I literally must have forgot about the league when the laser beam hit David Tennant. Because I was like, "Oh, we're actually going to get." more time with shooty like as the doctor in like his opening scene and he's going to be the one to defeat the toy maker and it was like nah let's not do that generate, apparently let's have as a soon as but the catch scene itself i thought it was like a little bit i think it was the moment that donna and mel went to hold his hands i realized something was up for me for me it was when the, the effect stopped and i was like oh fuck, it's real I, I hadn't seen any of the leaks because I diligently avoided them, so I kind of got my raw reaction to it. And honestly, I've kind of been dumbfounded for days in the sense that I didn't really know what I thought about the, the entire episode. Basically, until I really switched on the recording here and started talking about it, it's kind of made me realise what I felt, and it's just... Yeah, I, it's... It's worrying. I mean, you know, there's still every chance that the new series, maybe it does, maybe this has been, albeit an unnecessary way of dumping the lore and it's going to move on to uh, just being Doctor Who telling Doctor Who stories without all of the unnecessary baggage. Maybe it will be that. I hope it is. But I have to say I am well, concerned. And, even, it, and even if it is that, it, there's just the kind of, the way this was made in terms of the heavy reliance on references, the kind of unnecessary featuring of things like Unit and Mel... The massive law dump at the end. These kind of elements are big red flags oh, the, for me at this point the, as a Doctor Who fan. Dump. I admit the law dump speech did feature my least favorite delivery from Shuey. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Just, the, just, just the line where he talks about Sarah Jane. It's like, oh, that feels so unnatural. I loved but, her. Like, yeah, it's just the, oh, the, I don't know what it is. Russell has this obsession with reminding us that Liz Sladen is dead. Yeah, we already got. We is. already got. We don't. We 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 had farewell Sarah Jane over lockdown. We don't need any more. We're fine. Well, we're well, fine you've got now. the brownie box decks from Big Finish as well that remind you that every other exactly. like scene it feels like you don't need to keep doing that, Russell. It's like just move on. Like do your little name drop. Sure, name drop Adric because it's an anniversary. Because Adric's like the only companion everyone ever remembers dies. Where's my Katarina name drop? Where's my Where's Sarah Keenan name name drop? It? I mean, they named drop Mavic Chen, which I guess counts as that, but because Ugh. the Kemble thing did did result in everyone dying, so I will defend, I will play devil's advocate on them. But even so, mention mm -hmm. Katarina or Sarah Kingdom. Like some of the references, I was surprised they referenced the God of Ragnarok. Like, yeah, sure, do the do the really niche ones. Don't do the obvious ones. That one, I that one, I did. Honestly, my eyes just oh, glaze yeah, over yeah. whenever references come up these days because I'm just. I so just, over any kind of references in Doctor Who. I will, I will play Devil's Africa. And one thing, one I did generally love this that delivery from Shooty to when he's like, "Love you now, get out." I did love that. Oh, bit, yeah, that was, but, I did love that bit, but uh, but we I've, I've already made my thoughts clear on on Shooty being sidelined in the zone. So. I mean, is there a Doctor that we feel we knew less about? after having finished their regeneration story than this. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I wouldn't say. I mean, no, no, not really, no. Even we, ones we, with really we... poor writing, like The Twin Dilemma, or Time and the Rani, or The Woman Who Fell to Earth, um, 
you still sure got a sense of the character even dead. still see i don't really feel like this is his first story that's my problem yeah it's like, this, this is this is his post regen scene he just got a very long one like christmas is going to be his actual first episode and i think and hopefully yeah, like that christmas is, he actually looks like he's having fun it looks like vibes like i don't know how else to explain it like i'm so actually half excited for episode. it I'm, yeah, I'm half excited for a Christmas special, and that's not happened in a very long time. Honestly, yeah. kind of dreading it at this point on the basis of this no, episode, but we'll see. We'll see. I lo- I always no, give no, every no, episode no, a fair shake, to... and this no, one will be no exception. Right, I think um, that's probably time to uh, conclude the discussion, um, mainly just because I, don't know. I haven't I haven't enjoyed what I didn't enjoy watching it other than the first half of this episode, um, and I haven't enjoyed discussing it either. Need... Just so I think, yeah. Before before I go insane, let's end it. So do you just want to wrap up your thoughts, Kian? First, uh, I think we need to give a special shout out to the fact that Wilf shoots moles, well, no, despite never having shot a gun in World War Two. Yeah. Apparently, you should have you should have made that you should have made that just seem more awkward as well. When it's like, I felt there was a perfect cameo opportunity there, which I'm sure everyone who follows me has already seen that tweet, where you could have been like. Hey. And mad auntie Mel, and wacky neighbor Sergeant Benton. That would have elevated the entire episode. Just have John, just get John Levine on set and have him rant about <laughs> just, whatever for 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, just, just, have, just have, have him, Sergeant have Benton's pub's no beer gone is where they should have had it. <laughs> just uh, that, yeah. just John Levine ranting about Putin with no explanation. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. I mean, fair but enough. John, John, Levine, John Levine destroys the Catholic Church with facts and logic. Based. Um, anyway, Zach, do you want to wrap up your thoughts? Okay, okay. First, I was having fun. And first bit of the episode, really fun, really great ideas, and then completely nosedives when the Byron generation shit happens and fucks everything forever. For at least for the moment, anyway. But I'll say I was having fun until the by regeneration. That's basically my thought in a nutshell. Yeah. I, I, I kind of agree in the sense that it, it's such a shame we feel like we've moved backwards in this way, where it's like a really good episode idea gets some potential and is just sidelined for like the law dump of the week. I thought we were past doing it, this, but we really, unfortunately, it's aren't, and it's very worrying. Finale. Yeah. It's like it, there was so. The the- I, I'm. Really uh, disappointed to be honest because I thought I mean the Cecil Toymic has always been a like a story where they could have done way more with the concept and this episode was like a third maybe halfway to kind of achieving that it certainly went to some interesting places and it it almost feels like that plot is just unfinished yeah it feels like that plot is unfinished it just kind of unceremoniously ended as the episode like I'm bored with this now right new thing like you know. Can we just have an episode that's nah. focused on one thing? Please. <laughs> it's, it's gave him 60 minutes. Like, gave himself far too much to do in 60 minutes. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Sorry, this has probably been a bit more of a depressing panel discussion. I think my kind of anti-energies probably permeated it quite a lot. But those are my feelings on it. And, you know, I can only hope that my initial suspicions are proved wrong. And I really hope they are. And I will be giving the new series a fair shake and I really hope it I turn out to be completely wrong in the way I'm thinking now and this is just an aberration but there we go uh, thank you very much for joining Kian and Zach thank you for having us and I'll see you all back next time in another video next one will be classic I promise <laughs>